Hello students and welcome to our today's class. Today we are going to talk about trigonometric ratios. So the field of trigonometry, it is a point whereby we are using the right angled triangle to determine the ratio of two sides which can help us find the angles of that particular right angled triangle. So the right angled triangle is going to have uh, three sides. So we are going to have uh, something like this. So we have an angle of 90 degrees at a certain point. Then we have the three sides which we can label as A, B, C. And then we have got two acute angles here. The two acute angles or the angles which are less than 90 degrees. So the relationship between two sides of this right angled triangle is what we shall be referring here in a trigonometry as a trigonometric ratio. And these ratios are actually three. We have got a ratio we normally call the tangent, which is normally denoted as tan, which is actually the ratio of the opposite side of a adjacent. of um, adjacent. Then we have a ratio we normally call sine, which is normally denoted as sin, which is actually given as the ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And lastly, we have the cosine, which is normally denoted as cos, which is given by the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. So remember here, we are referring to acute angles, which we normally uh, denote by theta. So if we have this angle theta here, we have got this side, this side, and this side. We know the longest side of a right-angled triangle is actually referred as the hypotenuse. Then these two shorter sides are either going to be adjacent to this angle or opposite to this angle. Remember the hypotenuse does not change. Therefore, if we are referring to this angle theta here, the side which is next to it, which is B, is going to be adjacent. And the side which is now on the other side, which actually it does not make any contact with, this one is going to be the opposite side. So if we were looking for the tangent of this, it is going to be the opposite, which is A, over adjacent, which is B like that. If we are referring to this angle theta and maybe we are looking for the sign, the sign is normally given by opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, it is going to be opposite, which is A, over hypotenuse, which is C. If we are talking about the cosine, the cosine is normally given by adjacent side over the hypotenuse. In this case, it is going to be B over C. I want to repeat this. If you have a right angled triangle, the, hypone the hypotenuse is actually constant. It does not change. If this is our theta, therefore, this side is going to be adjacent and this one is going to be opposite, like that. But remember, theta can change. Theta can either be here or here. If we come and then change the position of uh, theta. If we change the position of theta, then the opposite and the adjacent are also going to change, but the hypotenuse will not change. Let me demonstrate that by drawing this. If I come and draw my right angled triangle like that, this is 90. I change now my theta to be at this point here. 
this will remain to be my hypotenuse. It does not change. But if I'm referring this one to my beta, then the side that is adjacent to beta is this. This is going to be adjacent and the opposite is going to be on the other side. So you note the position beta is actually occupying. I want to have an illustration of that so that maybe you can be able to understand the concept better. You can be given a right angled triangle. You can be given a right angled triangle. Like that, maybe you are told this is eight centimeters and this is uh, six centimeters and maybe this is 13 centimeters. This one must always be the wrongest side. And then you are told this is 90 degrees and now you are asked, can you find beta? Can you find this angle here? If we come and apply the concept of a trigonometric ratio, this is actually going to be the case. So we have, let me rewrite it here. We have our six, eight and 13 and always we must have an angle of 90 degrees and we are looking for this theta here. So if we were to use tangent, we can come here and we say tan theta will be equal to what? But first of all, let us label the side. This is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent to this beta, and this is the opposite to this beta. Therefore, the opposite of adjacent, it is going to be 8 over 6. So, tan beta is equal to what? 8, 8 divided by 6. eight divided by six, we find it is 1.33 recurring. So theta, you use your calculator to get theta, you shift turn this using your calculator, shift turn answer. I'm getting is giving us 59.03 degrees. So Having arrived here, once you have divided this and you get a number that is having decimal, you shift turn 1.333, you get this is the answer. If I am going to use sine, if I'm looking for this beta, but now I use sine, I come here and I say sine beta, it must be now opposite of a hypotenuse, which is 8 over 13. If I do 8 divided by 13, I find the answer is 0 0.6153 to four decimal places. Therefore, theta would be equal to shift sign 0 0.154. Shift sign answer. You get is going to be 42.199. Actually, the same as a 42.2, 42.2 degrees. 42.2 degrees. If I'm using cos, if I say I'm looking for cos beta, I'm going to use now adjacent. This is adjacent over hypotenuse. It's going to be equal to 6 over 13. If I do 6 over 13, 0. Point is going to be 0. 0.4615 then theta is going to be shift cos this 0. 0.4615 shift which gives me 69.46 degrees so basically that is how we normally apply. So you just look at where theta is. If theta is here, this is adjacent, this is opposite. But if theta is here, this is going to be adjacent, this is going to be opposite. The hypotenuse is always constant. The hypotenuse is always constant. It does not change. The hypotenuse does not change. 
So you can be given something or an information where it is not actually drawn and you are told a boy three meters tall casts a shadow of eight meters. Now you are told Because now you are told find the angle between the shadow and the line from the top of the head to the tip of the shadow so the boy is standing here this is the shadow they will make an angle of 90 degrees like that the boy is three meters the shadow is eight meters so you are asked what is the angle between the the shadow and the line that is drawn from the top of the head to the tip of the shadow this is angle here one thing you should be able to realize that with regard to this angle which we are being asked to compute, this is theta, and we are being given the adjacent and the opposite. And the ratio that talks about adjacent and opposite is actually the tan. So we can come here and say tan theta is equal to opposite of adjacent, which is 3 over 8, which is going to be what? Which you find is actually uh, 0. 375. This is tan theta. To get theta itself, you shift tan answer. Shift tan you get actually is going to be 22.84 degrees like that. You can be asked another question. A flag post casts a shadow casts a shadow of eleven meters. The distance from the top of the flag to the tip of the shadow is 18 meters. Find the height of the flag. So the flag is standing here. Obviously it will make an angle of 90 degrees with the ground. So here and then now we have been given the distance from the top of the flag to the tip of the shadow. This distance is 18 meters. And then the shadow itself, the shadow itself is 11 meters. Now this is our flag that is standing here. And we are told to calculate or to find the length of this particular flag. Then we need to add an information here. Find the height of the flag if the angle, if the angle formed by the tip of the shadow and the line from the top of the flag is maybe 47 degrees. So you have been given this angle here from the top of the flag to the tip of the shadow. This is 47 degrees. Now you are asked, you find this. 
So you need to come here and understand that this 11 meters is actually adjacent and this is opposite and this is the hypotenuse. So the easiest way you can be able to do this uh, is uh, to use either the cosine or the sine but actually we need to use the cosine because that is the one that talk about, talks about by what opposite over hypotenuse and actually the opposite if we use the cosine it talks about adjacent over hypotenuse and both sides we have so there's no need of using the cosine let us use the sine which equates the opposite and the hypotenuse so that we can be able to get the opposite side so we can come here and say sine 47 degrees is equals to opposite which we don't know of a hypotenuse which is 18. Therefore 18 times sine 47 is equals to opposite. I've just multiplied by 18 by 18 so 18 and 18 will cancel to leave our own opposite on this side. So we can just multiply this one direct which is 18 times sine 47. which gives us 12. We find that this is going to be 12.11. This is the opposite side. So the opposite side is 12.11. And that is actually the range. So the trigonometric ratios can be applied in computing real life uh, kind of calculations. And actually they can also help us uh, to demonstrate this uh, particular idea when it comes to certain scenarios like getting the heights of objects that make right angles at a particular point with their with their sides thank you very much